Finally, this line has been taking forever. That'll be $70, please. Man, this club better be good. That'll be $100 or my friend gets to beat you up. Oh. Microtransactions in games have been a hot button issue since the Xbox 360 generation. It seems like every year or so there's another big game that gets famously and heavily criticized for its microtransactions. Think Star Wars Battlefront 2, Gran Turismo 7, and Destiny 2. However, sports games often get snubbed outside their niche. The general attitude is that these games are just roster update cash grabs that serious gamers don't play. Even though the last Madden game sold more than any game not named Call of Duty or Elden Ring in 2022, it feels like the dire state of sports games in 2023 is underreported. Sure, you go to a game subreddit and fans are brutally honest about their frustrations with the series, but traditional games media still scores these games somewhat high, and most gaming YouTube channels won't even touch sports games unless that's their main focus. I'm telling you it's time to start paying attention, and you're not gonna like what you see. If Call of Duty or Fortnite or Destiny ever goes full pay to win, the popularity of games like NBA 2K23 will be a reason why. Now, to be completely honest, I bought NBA 2K23 on sale a while ago for about 15 bucks, and I've had a good time with it. The gameplay is silky smooth and flows perfectly. The franchise mode is maybe the best ever featured in a sports game, going through 40 years of NBA history. The level of detail and care put into this mode is top class. It's probably worth the initial $70 cost by itself, let alone the free download if you got it on PlayStation Plus in June. Unfortunately, it's stuck in the middle of one of the most predatory games on the market. Most of NBA 2K's game modes are pay to win. Full stop. You either pay the extra money to make your player good, or you don't and you barely have any chance of competing. The only online mode that's safe from this is Play Now. But Play Now and Franchise Mode are far from the most popular game modes NBA 2K23 has to offer. That title rests with my career. And it's a complete joke. My career is experiencing a career as your own created NBA player, and dear God, I wish it was as simple as that. First, you build your character. But be warned, if you screw this up, it's gonna cost you to fix it. In either hundreds of hours of grinding or by paying real money. Not paying it. You have to! Leveling up your character is so, so slow. And if you don't pay anything extra before starting, your character will start at a 60 overall. A 60 overall is a vastly inferior rating to basically any player you would face in game. So you are already playing the game on hard mode if you don't pay extra money at the start. Reminder, this game is $70 full price. It also has this ridiculous storyline concerning yourself and your rival, Shep Owens. Shep is mad at you because you were drafted 18th and he was drafted 19th. Fans in the in-game media make this a major controversy, which is funny because I don't think anyone has ever talked about last year's 18th pick, Daylon Terry, in any capacity. If it was like pick one or pick two, it'd be different, but nobody cares this much about the 18th pick versus the 19th pick. Sorry to the Daylon Terry stands out there. He said I'm good enough, I'm not think about shit that I should enough. You then do a few tutorial missions before you can explore the in-game hub, the city. This is one of the worst looking and worst playing hubs I've ever seen in a video game. Your character moves so slowly and so awkwardly. And don't get me started about the stupid skateboard that's your other option of traversal. NBA 2K is no Tony Hawk in that department. It's nearly impossible to find out what you actually want to do, especially if doing that thing is playing basketball. You know, the reason people buy this game? After spending 10 to 15 minutes to get to the places where you can play basketball against other people, shocker, it takes forever just to figure out where to go, you get to experience the matchmaking. There is none. Now, I'm not asking to have a super complex matchmaking system in place, but I expected something. You either stand on a circle hoping to God someone will play with your 61 overall broke ass, or you randomly get put on a team where every other player is level 99. That's how things are done in 2023. We just stand on a circle instead of, I don't know, having a menu or something. You just wait and wait and wait. Of course, that's unless your character looks cool, 
which costs an absurd amount of currency as well, the same currency you need to spend on making your player better. And again, this is all on top of paying $70 for the base game on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. And if you're playing the games where you don't wait on a circle and the game actually has a menu to match you up with random people, you're playing almost exclusively people that paid the money to level up their player. You need about 450,000 BC, which is the virtual currency in this game, to fully level up your player to level 99. You can play NBA games for about 500 to 700 BC each, or you can pay $100 and be good right away. I don't have the time or the money for that. So the game assumes that I'm just gonna suck until I get fed up and buy VC with real money. It's one of the most demoralizing experiences I've ever had in a video game. I suck and there's no real chance of getting better unless I pay extra money or make NBA 2K my full-time job. The other popular online mode, my team, feels just as bad as I was continually matched up against teams of all 99s with my team of guys in the 80s and 70s. Would I have probably lost if I also had a stacked team? Yes, but I didn't feel like I had any sort of chance from the minute I started. I understand I'm playing late in the game's life cycle, but it was just put out on PlayStation Plus, which means a ton of new players were also joining in. Would it have been possible to play one team that didn't have all 99s? Just one? And of course, getting that team of all 99s means spending VC spending more real money in this game. I don't even want to win every time. I just want it to feel fair and earned. NBA 2K feels bought. It's a shame because the game's offline modes are the best the genre has to offer. I didn't even talk about the excellent Jordan challenge, but its online modes are so predatory, so unbalanced, and just not fair. If more multiplayer games take up the NBA 2K model, it's going to be a battle of who has the biggest wallet not who is the most skilled, and that is not a game I'm willing to play.